does ashwagandha raise testosterone levels in men? Whether you know it or not, ashwagandha has gotten very popular in the world of male performance supplements. So what I want to do in this video is show you the results of six human clinical trials of ashwagandha as it pertains to testosterone levels, including the dosages that are used so you can see the results for yourself and compare the dosages in the studies to the supplements that you're taking. Oh, and by the way, I don't work for any supplement company or big pharma either. I'm just a guy who likes to look at the dietary supplement research so you don't have to. So let's begin by looking at this clinical trial that involved 150 men. Half of them are healthy and the other half of these guys are infertile and their ages range from 25 to 40 years. The infertile men are given five grams of ashwagandha root extract and the study lasts for three months. Results show that ashwagandha did indeed raise total testosterone levels in all of the infertile men who took the supplement. Here's a chart that they show in this study and as you can see ashwagandha significantly raised testosterone levels in all groups of infertile men. However, as you can also see in this table, the levels of testosterone in the infertile men was still lower than that of the healthy men who averaged testosterone of about 709 nanograms per milliliter. Other studies have also shown that ashwagandha may be an effective testosterone booster in infertile men. For example, in this review of four previous clinical trials, it was estimated that ashwagandha supplements might raise testosterone by about 17%. Again, this is for men who are infertile. So what do we have for men who are not infertile who take ashwagandha supplements? In this clinical trial, which lasted 16 weeks, 43 overweight men are split into two groups. There is a group that starts with the placebo for eight weeks and then they switch them to ashwagandha supplements. And then there's also another group who begins the trial by taking ashwagandha and after eight weeks, they are then switched to the placebo. And they also tell us that they're using 300 milligrams of a specific brand of ashwagandha called Shodan beads, which contain 10.5 milligrams of ashwagandha glycosides. And before we get into the details, I wanna point out that they do show us the baseline testosterone of the people in this study. So they're reporting testosterone in picomoles per liter, which I usually don't see on most blood tests. So let's convert these values to the more recognizable nanograms per deciliter. And if we do this, we can see that those who began the study taking the placebo had about 9.9 .9 nanograms per deciliter, while those who began the study taking ashwagandha had a testosterone of about 10.2 nanograms per deciliter. So in other words, everybody was basically at about the same baseline testosterone level at the start of the the study, that's good because it means we're comparing apples to apples. And after all is said and done, they analyze the results and they come to the conclusion that yes, ashwagandha supplements do indeed raise testosterone levels. Now, if we dig down a little bit further, we see that testosterone increases from about 9.6 nanograms per deciliter to almost 11 nanograms per deciliter. And again, I've translated picomoles per liter to nanograms per deciliter to make the data a little easier to interpret. Now, if we compare that to the placebo takers, we see that their testosterone actually decline throughout the study. And while that seems encouraging on the surface, these numbers, they don't look too impressive to me because depending on which organization you're getting your reference values from, total testosterone could range from anywhere from about 250 nanograms per deciliter all the way up to over 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. To me, it looks like these guys started this clinical trial with really low testosterone, and even after supplementing with ashwagandha for eight weeks, it looks like they ended the trial again with really low testosterone. Next up is this clinical trial, which involves 50 non-overweight men who were given ashwagandha or a placebo for eight weeks. And they're also telling us that they're using a specific brand of ashwagandha called KSM66. Okay, so what happened here? Well, total testosterone increased from 402 to 474 nanograms per deciliter in those who took ashwagandha supplements. That's compared to the placebo group, which really didn't see much of a change at all. And while that is good, I will point out that the increase in testosterone, while statistically significant, is still well within the normal range of testosterone. Additionally, it's also reported that the men taking ashwagandha also reported statistically significant improvements in various bedroom activities. However, if you look at the before and after numbers in this table, 
they don't look too impressive to me, which makes me think if you try this for libido purposes, results are probably gonna vary. In this next clinical trial, which has a rather long title, 111 overweight men and women are given 200 milligrams twice a day of a proprietary ashwagandha root extract or placebo for three months. Now, if we look at only the men in this study, we can see that there was no significant improvement in total testosterone. However, free testosterone did rise significantly. More specifically, the men began this trial with a free testosterone level of 8.64 picograms per milliliter, and three months later, it rose to 9.75 picograms per milliliter. Sounds good, and they also tell us that free testosterone rose about 13% in those who took ashwagandha supplements. Now, while that is good, I also want to call your attention to this part of the study that tells us that free testosterone remained in the normal range. Now, what is considered normal depends on which reference values you're looking at. For example, here are free testosterone reference range from different organizations. As you can see, Quest Diagnostic reference range for free testosterone is anywhere from 46 to 224 picograms per milliliter, while LabCorp states that a normal range is anywhere from 6.8 to 24 picograms per milliliter. The Endocrine Society, on the other hand, lists this 2018 data on their website showing a normal free testosterone of anywhere from 50 to 200 picograms per milliliter. So in other words, it looks like these men either had normal or low free testosterone after taking ashwagandha supplements. And more to the point for real world purposes, muscle strength as measured by the grip strength test did not improve in those who took the supplements. However, all hope is not lost. That all brings us to this very interesting investigation of ashwagandha exercise and muscle strength. And what I think makes this study particularly intriguing is that it combines ashwagandha with a strength training program. The resistance training program consisted of two to three sets of the following exercises perform to muscle failure. And for those who want more information on this, here's the repetition scheme where muscle failure was supposed to occur during this program. Okay, so it's reported that ashwagandha takers saw a significant improvement in total testosterone concentrations. The average total testosterone increased from 630 nanograms per deciliter to 726 nanograms per deciliter. That's good. Placebo takers, on the other hand, also saw an improvement in total testosterone, and that's probably due to the fact that they were strength training. But here's the thing. The increase in total testosterone in the ashwagandha takers was not significantly better than those guys who only strength trained and took a placebo. And one potential reason for this, they state in the study, is that there was considerable variation in the testosterone levels among the different men who took part in this study. Now, what's most intriguing here is that it's also reported that the men taking ashwagandha saw significant improvements in muscle strength compared to those who only lifted weight and took a placebo. Those taking this supplement saw an increase in their bench press by about 101 pounds, 46 kilograms, versus just 56 pounds, 26 kilograms, in those who only lifted weights and took placebos. The improvement in leg extension muscle strength was a little less impressive, clocking in at 30 pounds, 14 kilograms, in those who took the supplement, compared to just under 22 pounds or 10 kilograms in those who lifted weights alone and took placebos. So bottom line, this study presents some very intriguing results of ashwagandha and muscle strength and I for one would love to see it replicated by others so hey college students this would make an outstanding thesis or dissertation topic for you to do. Okay, so we covered an awful lot of information in this video, so let me try to make things a little easier by showing you this summary of these six clinical trials. Feel free to stop the video and take a closer look at the results and also take a look at the amounts of ashwagandha used in these studies so you can compare that to the supplements you are taking. So what do I think of all this? Well, based on the studies that I uncovered, Covered, it looks like ashwagandha may raise testosterone levels by a little bit in men, but it's not going to knock it out of the park. And personally, I think some of these studies have some problems, and I would like to see them replicated by others in the future.